the Wet Palette, a tool in a painter's utility belt that improves blends, keeps your paint fresh, and generally helps improve the whole painting experience. There are several types of wet palette out there on the market, aimed specifically at miniature painters, and even guides to make your own. But today, we're going to take a look at the one produced by Green Stuff World, and see if it really is worth your money. Spoiler alert, it totally is. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing stupendously. Wet palettes are something you'll hear people talking about in the hobby space from time to time, and for good reason, as they are something that is a really useful addition to your painting station. These nifty little tools not only help keep your paint fresh across multiple painting sessions, but also aid in techniques such as wet blending, helping make the process so much smoother. Most hobby tool companies at some point or another have released their own official wet palette, marketing it as the bee's knees of all the wet palettes out there. But there are also plenty of guides out there on how to make your own if you're not looking to spend the cash on another company's product. I'm a lazy bugger who can't be bothered to make their own, so today we're going to be comparing the Green Stuff World wet palette to the Army Painter wet palette to see if either are worth your money. Before jumping into the video, I just want to note that this video is in no way sponsored or endorsed by either Green Stuff World or the Army Painter. I just happened to be in the market for a new wet palette at the time and I decided to pick up the Green Stuff World one. So let's get comparing. The Green Stuff World wet palette comes in this sweet looking box and costs around £12 or $17. For your money, you'll get the wet palette tray, two pads of sanitized treated sponges in white, an instruction booklet with tips and tricks, and 50 sheets of sulfurized semi-permeable paper, or as it's more commonly known, palette paper. I'll be comparing this to the Army Painter wet palette, which comes in at £18 or $25. The Army Painter wet palette is very similar contents wise, giving you the palette tray with a special inner layer designed to hold six Wargamer brushes and 10 hobby brushes from the Army Painter range, two sheets of hydro foam and 50 hydro sheets with several booklets. Something I've always been skeptical about is the hydro paper, wet palette paper, whatever you want to call it, as it feels like it's a product that a company can just slap their branding on and charge you extra for because it is specially designed for use with this palette or that palette or specifically designed for miniature painters. When it came to this new palette, I did choose to compare it with some regular old parchment paper that you can get at the supermarket for like a pound, two pounds. And there was a real noticeable difference between the two. I don't know if it's like eight pounds worth of difference when you compare the price of hydro paper to the parchment paper, but it's definitely something worth noting. Another important thing worth noting is that the Green Stuff World wet palette comes with what they call sanitized treated sponge. This sanitization process is meant to help prevent the growth of mold on your wet palette due to the conditions that wet palettes create as that's something that some hobbyists experience with their wet palettes. This is something I've personally never had issue with, and as far as I'm aware, Green Stuff World is the only one that markets their hydrofoam as special sanitized stuff. But I mean, if it works, I'm certainly not gonna be complaining. The first thing I immediately noticed when opening the Green Stuff World palette was the lack of band to help secure the palette lid. I thought this might lead to issues in keeping my paint fresh across multiple painting sessions, but this worry was very much ill-founded. Since I started testing out this Green Stuff World wet palette, I've decided I'm never going to be going back to my Army Painter palette, and here's why. First is the paint freshness. Ever since getting my Army Painter wet palette, I found my paint stays fresh for maybe a day, if not two, but definitely no longer than that, which is something that I really was confused about when it came to wet palettes, as they're meant to help keep your paint nice and fresh across multiple days worth of painting sessions, provided you keep it topped up with water. With the Green Stuff World wet palette, my paint stayed fresh for the entire week, and to be honest, probably would have stayed fresh for even longer had I not filled up the palette paper and had to swap it out. This was something that immediately showed to me that there was a clear difference in quality between these two products, and that the elastic band on the Army Painter wet palette probably doesn't really do too much. Then is the way the palette behaves. Again, with the Army Painter wet palette, I found it didn't really behave too differently from my normal palette paper, outside of watering down my paints a little bit and help keeping them fresh for that entire painting session. This wet palette just never really seemed to work the way that I'd come to expect it to work from watching all these different YouTube videos and live streamers use their wet palettes. With the Green Stuff World wet palette, however, it was a totally different story. The palette behaved exactly like I was expecting it to behave. And this, along with how fresh it kept my paints throughout multiple days, just really proved to me how much better the Green Stuff World wet palette seemed to be compared to the Army Painter wet palette. I even noticed an improved smoothness to the mixes that I created of my paints on top of an improved smoothness to all the different blends that I was getting. This overall just made the entire painting experience so much more enjoyable. To make sure it wasn't an error on my part, I made sure to set up both palettes in the exact same way. 
And yeah, the Army Painter palette still continued to disappoint while the Green Stuff World palette continued to impress. While I might miss the paintbrush holder that's built into the Army Painter wet palette, really it's a small sacrifice to be making for what I consider a much higher quality product now having compared the two. So, do I recommend you buy the Green Stuff World wet palette? Absolutely. If you're in the market for a new wet palette, make sure to check it out as I'm sure it certainly won't disappoint. It's great value for money and it does its job very, very well. But that was only my experience with the Green Stuff World wet palette. Have you used this palette before? Make sure to let me know in the comments down below. I'll also try to answer any questions that you might have about this palette down in the comments. So if you have anything to ask, make sure to leave it down there. Here is some more content for your viewing pleasure and I hope you all have a wonderful day.